In crypto, we want a token to do 100x. However, there's one thing in crypto which is not a token which can potentially give us the best return on investment. And that is this, a Ledger hardware offline wallet. If you don't have one of these, or if you do have one but you don't use it very regularly, then you're missing out and potentially you could end up losing a decent amount of crypto. Every year, there's hundreds of millions of dollars of crypto that's stolen from people. So I'm going to take you through everything related to Ledger. Where to buy it from, how to set it up, how to use it with the Solana blockchain, as well as other blockchains as well. And in my opinion, I'm a bit of an authority on this. So you want to make sure you bookmark this video because you're probably going to come back to it every time you need to do something new with your Ledger. So firstly, what equipment do I have right here? I've got a Ledger. I also have something to record my secret recovery phrase. And I've got a pen. And if you don't have those things, let me show you where you can get them from. So the first website we're at is ledger.com. It's only ledger.com. This is where we can buy one from officially. If we come up to products at the top here, we can go and buy whatever one we want. But normally a Ledger Nano X or a Ledger Nano S Plus is sufficient. If we click on compare our devices, you can see them here. This is showing in euros. They're normally a little bit cheaper when it comes to US dollars. These two are far more advanced. But this one and this one is sufficient. When you order Ledger, make sure you're buying from ledger.com or a reputable seller like Amazon or something like that. Never ever buy a secondhand Ledger. Also, I recommend one other thing in order to keep your secret recovery phrase really safe. Click on accessories right here. Scroll on down and you can see this one, this one, and this one. If you buy one of these devices, it can help you keep your secret recovery phrase a little bit safer. Alternatively, I have this one, the Keystone tablet. It's far more affordable. They also have their own hardware wallet, but Ledger is still the best. But this product for just keeping your secret recovery phrase nice and safe, this works really well. Now I actually have one right here. I won't show you too much about it in this tutorial, but just to give you some sort of visualization on what it is, this is what it looks like. You can put a padlock here if you want to, and then you can just move it apart. You put all the words in right here, one to 12 and then 13 to 24. So now we've got our ledger, it's brand new, it's still in the plastic wrap, that's a good sign. Let's open it up and I'll show you what's inside. So this is our ledger box, slide it open, and we've got a ledger here, this is the USB device, it has a USB-C connection, it's an orange, it's a monochrome screen. We've got this, nothing in here, in this, what do we have? Just a quick start guide, getting started, and some recovery sheets. So this is where we can write down our secret phrase. We'll save these and other stuff that we don't need. And then finally, we've got one ledger cable. This is just USB to USB-C. Now in the meantime, we'll put these pieces of paper just to the side and I've gone and connected a USB cable. I've used a different cable because the other one is too short, but in general, make sure you're using a cable that's trusted. Now the next thing you need to do is download Ledger Live. So at ledger.com, come at the top, app and services and click Ledger Live, and then you can download it for Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android as well. We'll go with Windows here, and we'll save, and we'll download this. Now install the software. Install, and then run Ledger Live, click Finish. Now we've got Ledger Live open, it will normally prompt you to set up a new Ledger. On this occasion, because I've already used it, what I need to do is go down to my Ledger, down the left here. Here Ledger is suggesting I connect my device, but this is a new device, so, Let's just have a look at the screen. Welcome to Legend Nano X. Press right button to continue. This is your right button. This is your left. Right, 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 right. And then to push enter, you push both buttons at the same time. We can either set up as a new device or we can restore from a recovery phrase if we already have a secret recovery phrase that's 24 words and has never been imported into MetaMask, Phantom, Soulflare, etc. So we'll go up and set up as a new device. And here we can choose a pin with four to eight digits. So for this one, I'm just going to do zero, one, zero, one, and just do four. However, you of course would do something a lot more secure and ideally eight digits. Here I can enter by just pushing both buttons. Now I've got a tick right here, or I can add more numbers and continue on. We'll confirm it here, zero, one, zero, one, and confirm the pin. And now we have to write down a recovery phrase. So these are 24 words that are very important that we keep nice and safe. Push the two buttons together. The actual ledger device will generate the 24 words. And these 24 words, they are your only backup in order to recover your crypto. So you have to write them down and keep them super safe. Now we can press both buttons to continue and we start writing them down. 
word number one is abstract, word two is surround, and so on and so on. We'll skip ahead so I can show you the last few words, but I will quickly show you all of the different words that we've got here. Skirt, smart, click, solution, and then word number 20, company, husband, alone, giggle, and lonely. Now I'll go back and I'll write all of them right here. Now I've written down all 24 words. And if you're not a native English speaker, make sure you're writing very clearly. In fact, everyone needs to write very clearly. You need to make sure you know exactly which word means what and ensure there are no spelling mistakes. Ledger only produces English words. Now we can go to the right and press both buttons to continue. At this point, we have to confirm our recovery phrase. Both buttons again, confirm word number one. We just cycle through until we find the right word. Abstract, confirm. Word number two, surround. This is word two. Word three, skirt, confirm, and so on and so on. We'll skip ahead until the end. We're now at word number 10. If you make a mistake, you have to redo this part again. So make sure you're paying attention. You cannot go back. Also, every few words, make sure you're checking the word number. So this is number 16 with number 16, just so you don't miss a word. Now the last three words, We've got alone, giggle, and lonely. Your recovery phrase is set. Keep it in a secure place. We'll go over that later, and then we'll go to the right. If lost, stolen, or forgotten, all your assets will be lost. You will not be able to recover them. Never share it with anybody. Ledger will never ask you for it. Nobody that's legitimate will ever ask you for your secret recovery phrase. Go to the right and press both buttons to continue. And now we're processing. Device is ready. Go to the dashboard. We can come back to our computer here. We have to connect and unlock your device. So we'll go ahead and we will disconnect it. Then we'll click fix it, go back, and we'll go ahead and we'll reconnect. Connecting the device and we'll put in our pin zero, one, zero, one, and enter. Now I've changed back to the ledger cable because my other cable wasn't actually working. Now we have to allow ledger manager. Or if we go to the right, it's deny. So we'll go allow and push both buttons together. And then we can see in the DAP that we have to update the firmware. So click update firmware and then install update. This only takes a couple of minutes and make sure you keep your ledger plugged in. Now we have to install it. So we'll go to the right and then confirm update. And now we can put in our pin number. So zero, one, zero, one, and proceed. Our ledger is up to date. Click finish and our ledger is now loading. Now allow the secure connection, press both buttons together, and we've got another firmware update right here. You may as well do them all now. We'll quickly do this, but I won't talk you through this again. While this is updating, make sure you keep this super safe. Remember, if anyone has access to these words, they can take your crypto. They can import this into any wallet out there and be able to access all of your addresses and take all of your crypto. You've got three of those cards, so you may wanna go and transfer the words onto each of the card and double check them. At the end of the video, we'll cover tips on where to store your card, just as tips. Now our ledger is up to date. We can click finish. This will reload. We'll allow the secure connection and we're completely up to date. We can see this right here, a genuine check, meaning that no one has tampered with this. However, we bought it brand new. It was sealed, so we know it's legitimate. Also, in case it's not completely obvious, this is my secret recovery phrase. Yours will be completely different. And the only reason that I'm showing it to you is because this is a tutorial video. We're not actually going to use this secret recovery phrase. Now at this stage, we can install the blockchain apps that we want to play on. As an example, you may have some BTC, you may have some Ethereum. We've definitely got some Solana and you can see a few of the other ones here as well. Cosmos as an example, or you can just go and search. Sui maybe, Aptos. If you're looking for something like base or another EVM, don't worry. We can just install that via Ethereum itself. So we'll go ahead and we'll install Ethereum and then we'll also install Solana. You can see on the app, Ethereum is loaded and now we're loading Solana and the apps have been successfully installed. Now we go to manage my accounts. We'll open the Solana app on our phone just by pushing the two buttons and we're going into Solana. Now, a lot of people don't really use Ledger Live, myself included, but I am gonna start the account just in case you wanna use Ledger Live. I'm gonna go and add this account. Solana one, we'll just go and call it Solana Staking. We'll add account and then done. Go over to the left-hand side where it says accounts and we can see it here. If we click add account, we can go and choose our asset like Ethereum, continue, go back to our app, 
open the app. It will find the first account and we can just say Ethereum, even just Ethereum one, that's fine. Add account and done. Now we've got two different addresses here, one for Ethereum and one for Solana, but we can add more if we want to. Just go add account, choose the asset again, type in Sol, we'd select Sol and then continue. Ledger has a strange thing where basically it won't let us actually add the account until we've put funds in the first account, but that's just a ledger issue or a ledger feature maybe. So now we can go and put some funds into this wallet. We can click on it and then click receive and then continue. And this is our address. We can also see the pub key, the public key is exactly the same. And you do want to double check this the first time you're setting this up. You have to confirm it's correct, push right, and then both buttons together. And it says address shared securely, but it's not actually sharing it with anybody. It just says that. We'll click done and I'll show you how to do the next stage. Now I've got a couple of different wallets here. I've got backpack. We'll unlock that one. We've got phantom here. These are hot wallets. And then I have my preferred wallet, which is Soulflare. I do encourage everyone that's using Solana to check out Soulflare. It just works faster. It's a just a fast feature rich wallet. It only supports Solana. So the dev team is only working on making this wallet better for Solana as opposed to the others, which are good choices as well, Phantom, but they support about four or more blockchains. And Backpack is in the same kind of realm, supporting more and more blockchains and also building a centralized exchange as well. And over here, we've got MetaMask Wallet, and this looks after the Ethereum virtual machine networks like BNB, Base, ETH, Polygon, etc. Now, let me show you how it works if we add an address to Phantom. Go to Phantom and then come up to the left, and then go plus add connect wallet. We want to connect a hardware wallet and then connect your ledger and connect. It can see the Nano X and connect and then continue. It's connecting your accounts. It's looking to find the Solana accounts. Sometimes you will run into issues if Ledger Live is running as well. So if so, just close Ledger Live. Accounts connected, click select accounts. And we can see this address is completely different to Ledger Live. Have a look at it. These three addresses, they're entirely different. So if we go ahead and if we connect, say this one and then click done, then go back into our Phantom Wallet. We're in Ledger One here and then go to account number one. We can go and send a small amount of soul just as a test. Send Ledger One, something small like 0 0.01. Next and send. This will go into that ledger. Ledger one, let it do its thing. A little bit of a refresh, 0 0.01 sol. But as a reminder, we actually want to send some Solana to this address. Click receive and then continue. Unlock the device and then retry. We want to send it here. And that's just because sometimes we may only want to use Ledger Live. The issue is they use different derivation paths. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the address that we want to import. So if we come back to our Phantom Wallet, it's locked itself again, but if it didn't, we could go and send some funds to that address. Alternatively, we can go into our Soulflare Wallet and then click this button here to make it big. Now on Soulflare, let's come up to the top here, to the circle, and then click plus, and then click connect ledger, and then click continue. You can see we've got an error here, this sometimes happens when Ledger Live is open. So we'll quit Ledger Live. And now it's working and it's detecting your existing accounts. This process can take up to a minute. It doesn't normally take very long at all. So here we can see what a derivation path is. This derivation path right here, this is the one that Phantom uses by default. However, this is the one that Ledger uses by default. Now Soulflare, it sees all of them so we can go and import whatever we want to. We can come in here, and we can decide to toggle on all of these if we want to. Or maybe we just want to import this one and this one. And just to refresh your memory, I'll go and paste in the actual address that we copied from Ledger Live. This is it here, 7GU, and then ending in GQB. So that's why my preference is to start off with Ledger Live, because if we don't go and import this, if we click back, if we were using Phantom as an example, and if we clicked here, and we started to use this address, we cannot import it and use it strangely in Ledger Live. Now, I'm not too sure how Backpack works. Let's have a quick look here though. Come up here, then click Add Account, Import a Wallet, 
Solana, user hardware wallet, Ledger, Nano X, Connect. This is fetching the public keys. And here we can see the funded address, which is this one, but also different derivation paths. So backpack, it uses the same one as Phantom. Backpack Legacy, it used a different one. Solana Legacy, a different one again. Ledger Live, this one here. But I'm actually looking for this one, 7GU. And under Ledger Live, I cannot see 7GU. So maybe it's under something else. Not there, not there, not there. It's under Solana Legacy. So Backpack has an issue where it doesn't realize that Solana Legacy and Ledger Live seem to be the same, at least for Solana accounts. Either way, we'll go back to Soulflare. So we imported this one already. Now we'll go into this one and I'm going to go and import just a couple of them, like four of them. Import and then I've got them down here. We probably want to rename this as Staking Soul because we know this is the Ledger Live account. And if we set it up in Ledger Live first and at least know the derivation path, we can set them all up on the same derivation path. We can still use them with Soulflare and Ledger Live and we can still import them into Phantom and Backpack. It just makes it a little bit easier this way. We've got this one. This one is from Phantom. So we can call it Phantom Ledger. Save that. And then we can rename these whatever we want. Maybe this one is Ledger NFTs. Save that. This one could be Ledger DeFi. Save that. And I have no idea what else to put in this one. But maybe this is a little bit of a DGen Ledger, which you shouldn't really be doing, but some people will. Like if you've got a decent amount of money, you don't want to keep it in a hot wallet, you're happy to keep it on a Ledger, then you can use the Ledger DGen. Now let me show you moving a little bit of soul from here. We'll go and send and recipient. We're going to go put this into our staking soul. It says it's an unused address. We know it's correct. We're going to go with something small, send and confirm. Now if we go back to Ledger Live, we can see that we can import in another address. So that's just ticked over $1.42. We'll go to our accounts. We've got our Solana staking, add account. We can now, if we want to, go to Solana again and then continue and we'll add a second account. Now, most of the time, people that are using Ledger Live and only Ledger Live, maybe they're just holding assets. They're not actually using the blockchain like a DGN would or like I would. And that's why they may not be comfortable to use Soulflare or MetaMask or something like that. They may have a decent bag of soul. They can go into Ledger. They can stake it. They can stake it with Felday.com. They get a return on their soul. And in the future, they can unstake it and sell it if they want to. Nevertheless, we now see we've got Solana 2. We can add that account and click Done. And we can have a look and see what is the address. Click on it. Receive. Continue. And it's CIO. We can see the same thing on our Ledger. And if we go into Soulflare here, come up here, we can see it here, Ledger NFTs, C-I-O-P, this is the same address. So that's how you set up your Ledger. I'll show you a couple more things still though. Let's go up to Phantom, we'll put in our password and we'll unlock it. And now we'll go and we'll import the wallet again, we'll connect the hardware wallet, we'll connect and we'll find the one that was on a different derivation path, connect. Because it now has funds in it, it should be seen by Phantom. I need to go back to my ledger. I'll reject that, reject that. And this should work. However, maybe it's not working because I've got ledger live open. We'll give it a refresh. We'll try again, continue. And here you can see accounts connected. Select accounts. You can see this one right here. Remember it's on the different derivation path, but it can see it once it's actually been funded. Then we go ahead and we can import it. Done, go back into Phantom. We've got Ledger 2 and we've got Ledger 1. Now it's the same deal when it comes to Backpack. We come up here, add account, import the wallet again, Solana, use a hardware wallet, Ledger. It'll fetch the public keys and then we can just add them. So we can see the fund addresses and you know we can do the other ones as well. We'll import the wallets and then we'll go up into our Backpack. We've got Ledger 1 and Ledger 2. Now this should be obvious, but if you rename a wallet address, it doesn't update on the blockchain or anything like that. It only updates locally in the actual wallet that you're updating it in. So if we name them over in Soulflare, they won't update here, they won't update in Phantom, they won't update in Ledger Live. And if we change computers and use Soulflare again, we'll of course have to go and actually update the name again. Now let's cover how we can actually move crypto. So 
do we have an NFT in this wallet? It seems as though we only have some scam NFTs. We can move one of those if required, but we'll have a look and see if we've got anything better than that. We've got this older wallet here that's staking some bonk. So we'll jump in here. I've got my orphan, Dean's list, Namaste, and a few other things here. So as an example, maybe I wanna take this particular comic. This is a DJ Ape comic. I can take this and I can send this onto my ledger. So for recipient, I'll click here and just scroll on down until I see it. So I'd probably put it into ledger NFTs as it's an NFT and then click send and confirm. This is going from a hot wallet so I don't have to confirm anything on my ledger. Let's change this now. We'll scroll on down to ledger NFTs and we can see it like this. There's no soul in here at present. So if I wanted to send it somewhere else, I need to seed it with some soul first. Now I'm gonna add this wallet here into Ledger Live. I will approve it and done. So even though we can see it in Ledger Live, we can click on accounts, Solana 2. It will not show us any NFTs, not with Solana. I'm unsure if any blockchain shows NFTs with Ledger, but we can't actually see any NFTs, which is one of the reasons why people use Soulflare. Now what I'll do is I'll go and I'll take a little bit of Sol from this wallet, nothing crazy, just a small amount. And I'll go and send 0.01 and I'll put it into this wallet like that. Send and confirm. Transaction is complete. If we come back here and give this a refresh, we should see $1.42 worth of soul in this wallet as well. I've synchronized it, but it hasn't updated. There it is. It can be a little bit delayed with Ledger Live. Now let me show you how you can move things from your ledger to another wallet. So we'll go into Soulflare to do this and we'll go down and we'll go to our ledger NFT, jump into our NFTs tab. Then we're gonna move this back into the original wallet. So we'll send and then select the address, come on down and click staking bonk and then click send. You can see it says failed to sign the transaction using ledger. Now what this normally means is that you have not enabled blind sign. Blind sign needs to be turned on, let's turn it on. So we're in the Solana settings. And if you're not in there, in the actual DAP, just quit and you'll see Solana, install app, control center and Ethereum. We'll go into Solana and then go to the right to settings and then allow blind sign. Push both buttons together. It's currently defaulted to no. Go down to yes and push both buttons again. Now we can go back and we'll be good to go. So what is blind sign? Blind sign is where Ledger wants to go and do a transaction, but it cannot show all the information on what's actually happening on the blockchain on your Ledger. I'll show you what it looks like in a second, but it's basically saying, do you trust the action that you're performing? Because we cannot simulate it for you so that we can actually work out what is actually happening. Whereas if you're using Soulflare and other popular wallets, it will normally show you what's gonna happen. As an example, you're listing an NFT on Tensor. That will not say that on your actual ledger, but it will in your Soulflare. So now let's go here. We'll take the recruits, we'll send it. We'll go and send it back to staking bonk and we'll click send. And we have to confirm the transaction right here. It says unrecognized format, this is normal. Push to the right, the message hash, which we're not gonna be able to read. Push to the right. And then the only option is to approve. So push both buttons together and now we've approved the transaction. Every time you update your ledger firmware, it will reset back to no. So as soon as you've updated it, go and turn it on to yes. Otherwise you'll be troubleshooting that problem for ages. We've sent our NFT. We'll come here and we'll get rid of this small amount of soul and I'll go and send it back to this wallet right here so I can show you how to do it. Send and then confirm the transaction once again and approve. Now with your ledger, you normally have more money on it. And because you've got more money on it, you're a little bit nervous when you send something. So as an example, this is worth $1,600. If I go and send it, I can go and find the address using Soulflare, but I can also double check the first four and the last four characters. So C-I-O-P, I can select it, I can see it here and then I can send it. It's all about labeling your addresses and making sure it is correct. If you're nervous, go and send like one cent of soul to the address, then go and check it, make sure it's there, 
and then go and send it the exact same way, only this time with a thousand US dollars or a hundred thousand US dollars or your prized NFT or whatever it may be. Now, how do we do it from Phantom? It's exactly the same way. So we've got this one, we've got this one. We can just click on this and I can go and send it back to say this account. I can either copy it here or just in Ledger 2, click send and using the address book, go and find it and then click max or whatever it is that I want to send and then next and then send and then confirm it on my ledger, write message hash and approve. And that's sending that soul backpack. It's going to be the same way again. So let's have a look here. We've got nothing in this one. We've got a little bit in this one. I'm going to jump into my soul flare and I'm going to go and I'm going to copy this address GTDX back into backpack and I'm going to go send it. I'm going to paste it. These are the last four characters. Push home. We can see the first four. Next, send whatever you like, review. You can see it is simulated here. It's just done in a little bit more of a technical way. We'll approve and then we'll go and we'll approve it on our ledger. Now the final thing I'll show you is MetaMask. We'll jump into MetaMask and then click up here and then add account or hardware wallet. Add a hardware wallet and then select Ledger. And then before we go any further, let's go out of Solana, quit that and then hop into Ethereum and then go continue. Nano X, connect. And then this also allows us to select the derivation path. So Legacy, Ledger Live. It's easy, it's just to go with Ledger Live. So here we can go and import, say, three accounts if we want to, unlock them. And now if we want to, we can go and send a small amount of BNB or maybe there's uh, something on another blockchain. Maybe we've got something on base, a little bit of ETH. We can go and take some ETH. We can go send and we can scroll on down and we can go to Ledger 3, select it and we can go and do something small. Push this button, maybe 10 cents, continue and then confirm. It will take 60 seconds because this network is a little bit slower or quite a bit slower than Solana. But normally it's not going to be 10 seconds. Then we just go here, Ledger 3, and we'll see this come through shortly. Ta-da. Now, if we want to send this back to another address, we can just click send, find the account, max. I don't know what it's going to cost in gas fees, but we'll click continue. Looks like it's going to be okay. We'll confirm. And then we've got this review transaction. It says where it's going from, the amount, and where it's going to, the network is base, the fees, accept and send or if we wanted to we could go one step further and just deny it or if we get really nervous we could just unplug it then of course it won't go anywhere now i've actually realized that the reason why this is not sending is because i don't have blind sign turned on so let's go to the right settings blind signing you can see it says disabled and now it's enabled back and we're good to go let's try it one last time send count number one We'll go with 60 cents. I'm sure that's fine. Continue, confirm, accept and sign. And this transaction should go through and it has. So that's how you set up your Ledger wallet. There's plenty more things to cover, such as troubleshooting, but I'll cover that in a different video. The last thing that I want to mention is just this. Where do you store this? What I'm about to tell you is certainly not financial or legal advice. You can go and have a Google of it. Basically, there are so many different opinions. But essentially, you want to write this in a pen that's not going to fade. Green may not have been the best choice for me, but I don't even have pens these days. Put it in something waterproof and then hide it and keep it somewhere safe. Some people like to store it with a trusted lawyer or some keep it with a family member. Some people put it in a safe and other people even take this seed phrase and split it up into different parts. Give one part to someone, another part to someone else, or even a third part to somewhere else. This comes under the realm of operational security and you have to do a little bit of research yourself to decide what's best for you. Now, a couple more things. When your Soulflare hot wallet, and by hot wallet, I mean a wallet that's connected to the internet. When it gains too much value, maybe it's worth $20,000 or something that's quite a bit of money for you, move the majority of the funds onto your ledger. Every time you need to enter a DeFi dApp or something like that, it will take longer but it is a more secure approach for keeping your crypto nice and safe. And finally, a couple of good tips. This is my Soulflare wallet. 
I will never ever go and import this seed phrase, this secret recovery passphrase right here. It will never ever be imported or put onto a computer. It needs to be kept off the internet. In this one here, it's 12 words. It can be 24 words as well. It's connected to the internet, which means there's always some small chance that it gets hacked or exploited if you do not have good operational security. Whereas this one has everything encrypted. And even though it connects to your computer, the actual seed phrase or secret recovery phrase is never put onto the internet in any way. It's never stored in code on the actual computer. So it's not actually connected in some way to the internet. That's one of the more common things that happen. People take the seed phrase and they import it into a phantom wallet or a software wallet. The other thing I get asked is, can I take this public address and move it onto my ledger? The answer is no. This belongs to another secret recovery phrase. It's a hot wallet. And if you want to have better security, just take the funds out of this wallet and put it onto a new address on your ledger. Another common question is, if I have an issue with one wallet, as an example, let's say we take this one here, staking soul, and we connect it to a DAP, which is illegitimate. And we go and sign a transaction and they take our money. Will the other wallets still be okay? And the answer is yes, unless you went and put this secret recovery phrase right here, this one, unless you actually put it into a website. And of course, you never ever do that. You never share that phrase with anybody. In which case, these ones would be fine. Some other people prefer to never let their ledger actually touch another DAP. And that's entirely up to them. They'll send crypto in here. They'll go and stake it with validator.com directly in the actual Ledger Live app. And that's all they'll do. They'll move NFTs into this and they'll just sit there. If they want to move it out, they may connect it to Soulflare or Phantom or Backpack. However, they will not go and connect it to Magic Eden or Tensor or Famous Foxes or something like that. That's a personal decision and it's entirely up to you. If you've got advanced knowledge, then you can do what you like. If you don't, if you're still learning, play it safe, just stay cautious. Now, finally, this relates to Phantom Wallet, but it may relate to any wallet. And maybe they'll even fix the problem. But if you cannot send any crypto out of this wallet, first ensure that blind sign is on. And then next, go and remove this wallet from Phantom. So you can just come up here, probably manage accounts, remove account here, click remove and then go and reconnect and import it. Add connect, connect your hardware wallet, and so on. Once you re-add it, try it again, because sometimes just removing it and re-adding it fixes it. Also remember, if you're having issues, quit Ledger Live first. Also restart your computer. That will quite often fix things. And you can also try changing the USB cable and making sure you're using the Ledger Live USB cable. That shouldn't be much of an issue, but sometimes I have noticed that a really long USB cable will not work. Well, that pretty much covers it when it comes to Ledger. If you've got any questions, put them below. If I can help, I will. Otherwise, contact ledger.com directly and open a ticket with them. Never ever reach out on Twitter because it's just full of people scamming you. And if you don't have a Ledger, use my referral link below. It helps me out, helps out the channel, and you may get a bonus yourself.